Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him by whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in which there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. In these weeks of Epiphany, we are invited to come and see today. Come and see that God is active in creation. We are invited to come and see what great things God is about to do. We are invited to come and see where God will lead us. We are invited to come and see and to invite others to come and see. I share with you today the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the love of God was revealed to us through Jesus Christ. Those heavens opened up. Those heavens opened when Jesus was born. Those heavens opened as we celebrated the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, last week. Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, Jesus said to Nathanael. The season of Epiphany, we celebrate that God is revealed to us. We're back in the book of John. We're going back and forth with Mark and John. John 1, the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. The ever-living Word of God. We were discussing in Sunday school class this morning about how Jesus was in the synagogue and he opened up the scriptures of the prophets, and right there, the Word of God, the ever-living Word of God, was teaching the Word of God, and Jesus fulfilled that Word. In Advent, the prophet did tell us that heaven would split open, and the reason that heaven would split open is that God would come and make things right, that God would make things the way they were supposed to be. And at Jesus' baptism, the voice from heaven split through the atoms and came to us. And all of creation was touched by God. There was that great chasm we talked about last week. That great chasm caused because of our sin. And we did not have a connection with God. And Jesus Christ was that connection Jesus Christ filled that great divide and broke all those barriers down. Jesus came and walked among us. Jesus came and he stepped into the Jordan River, those, those murky waters of the, of the flowing Jordan River. Jesus was very much alive in creation. People could touch him. People could talk with him. Jesus was there to hear 
hear from creation and to touch creation. And now he reaches out to these first disciples and he reaches out to Nathaniel and he says, come and see. As Jesus walked with creation and as Jesus was active in creation, he saw the oppressed and he saw what it was like to be oppressed. Jesus saw hungry, poor people and he knew what it was like to be hungry as he was in the desert for 40 days. Jesus interacted with creation. This was God touching creation. Now I saw Sight and Sound has a new show that I want to go see. It says Jesus live on stage. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> but this is the enactment of Jesus actually being live on stage. God was live with us in the flesh. Through Jesus, we touched. Through Jesus, we smelled. Through Jesus, we heard and we saw God firsthand. And through Jesus, we see and touch and hear and feel God lead us down the pathway in life. And this day, we will taste and see of God in the communion time. The revelation of God is just not about being able to sense God. It's about the revelation of what God is about to do. And Jesus showed that in his life. Why wouldn't God want to be revealed to us? We heard the psalmist today that God traces our journeys and our resting places. God knit us together in our mother's womb. God has put his hand upon us like that Sculptor, sculpting that, that statue, that work of art. And now he longs to connect with his creation once again. Jesus fulfilled that prophecy of long ago. We have found him about whom Moses and the law and all the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth, an unsuspecting place, the Savior, the king comes from Nazareth. Nathaniel says, are you sure? Are you sure about Nazareth? And Jesus says, you come and see. Jesus invites him to take that faith step, that God making the impossible possible. Come and see. Take this journey with me. Samuel's call story that we hear out of 1 Samuel. And the next 10 verses tell the story. You can dig into it later. They, they tell the story of what God wanted Samuel to do. The voice of God must have been just as unusual and unbelievable because visions were rare in that day, 1 Samuel tells us. And there was action involved. Eli's vision was growing dim. And it sounds like the people's vision had grown dim as well. The lamp of God was still lit in the, in the temple. Samuel hears God's voice. They lay down and they get up. Eli perceives and makes a judgment call from what he sees. Samuel spoke and listened. Here I am. Lord, in the present, here I am. I remember uh, children are so impressionable, and I remember as a youth uh, going over this story in Sunday school, and one time I heard a voice in the house when I was home alone, and I thought it was God speaking. <laughs> I thought I heard someone call my name, so just in case, I said, here I am, Lord. <laughs> the obedient servant. Impressionable children. God came to the impressionable. God came to the lowly. In the Advent and in Christmas, we, we heard of the shepherds, and we heard of Mary and Joseph. We heard 
of the innkeeper, actually. And we heard of some folks that we consider to be a little well off, the sages, but in a way, they were foreigners. So they were, in a way, they were lowly as well in the country. And God comes to these fishermen, these first disciples, these lowly people, and heaven splits open, and God wants to walk with them. Nathaniel's question about Nazareth is just as much a question about his own status. He's asking, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Perhaps he's reflecting on his own life. Can anything good be made of this? And Jesus says, you will see greater things come and follow me. Because as we know, with God, all things are possible. God loved us enough to come and stand with us. God loved us enough to come and walk with us, to listen to us, to know our pain, and to take us by the hand and lead us. No matter our situation in life, God comes to us. The prophet proclaimed that God would level the mountains and raise the valleys, that God would make things right. And as Jesus walked down the pathways in those first century uh, villages that he walked through, when he saw injustice, he saw it and named it for what it was. Jesus stepped into zones of discomfort, and he led his disciples into those zones of discomfort. Jesus found those in need, and he went to them directly. He found people hanging out in the trees that nobody else would see. He found that he was there, he was present for the Pharisee Nicodemus to come to talk to him at night. He stood up for the prostitute who was about to be stoned. He who is without sin cast the first stone. He dwelt among us. He lived with us. I heard an incredible testimony this past week. You, most of you know Pastor Diaz, Pastor Enrique and Inez Diaz, who meet here and lead Moment of God Church Sundays at 4 p.m. And their ministry started right in the neighborhood. Their ministry started with them packing uh, brown paper bags of food and going door to door and meeting people on the sidewalks and saying, can I pray for you? And their ministry started right from scratch in, in the neighborhoods. And one thing that really strikes me about the Diaz's and the Moment of God churches, church is their Pastor Diaz told me that there was one particular time when there was a house, there was a household that really needed help. And they went in there, the pair of them went in there, and they cleaned up the house for the people. They loved them, they talked with them, they listened to them, they did the dishes for them, they vacuumed for them, they, wa they walked the journey with these folks. And that's exactly the example of what Jesus did. When Jesus walking and living among us, that's exactly why Jesus walked and lived among us, to show us that example. Jesus walks among us and calls us to come and see, and then we will see greater things. This is the beginning of the good news. And when Jesus calls us, the work is done with our hands and our feet. There was, another, there was another person in our history whom we celebrate tomorrow, the life of Martin Luther King Jr. We celebrate his ministry and his work. We celebrate how he walked among the people and he invited others to come and see God's justice in this world and to name injustice for what it is. He was one who stepped forward in faith in the discomfort zones 
of this world and paid a mighty price for it, may I say. So we have this invitation to come and see and to take a faith step. And I invite you in 2018, I invite you in this new year to listen to God, to pray, and ask God where those places are that you can do a new work where God is leading you. Places that God is leading you to serve God amongst the people in the neighborhoods, maybe taking on something new here at church, maybe giving something up here at church as we've talked about before. Where it is that God is leading you and as we envision, especially during Lent time, as we envision what it is that God would have this place to do, this place called St. Matthew Evangelical Lutheran Church, and where it is that we sit in this world and walk with this world, I invite you to come and see and to listen to what God has for you. I have these invitations. I found there's eight packs for a dollar at Dollar General, or Dollar Tree. I love that place. And what I'd like you to do, I'm going to hand each of you an invitation, and I'm going to say, come and see. And I invite you into new work for God. I invite you to enter a time of prayer. And I invite you, you can even take this invitation, you can do whatever you want to with it. You can also take this invitation to invite someone else to something new, to come and see. And before we sing the hymn of the day, I'm going to go around to the congregation. I'm going to invite each of you to something new. Glory be to God this day. <laughs>